Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In this week's video I am continuing my series on how to create great pieces with limited supplies. So for today's drawing I am only using my 5 pan pastels again. Those are blue, red, yellow, black and white for my underlayer. And for the details I am using the Stabilo Carbotello pastel pencil set again. And of course one soft tool that's double F by pan pastel to apply the pan pastels with. What I want to show you with this is that you don't need a lot of fancy supplies to get beautiful drawings. With this week's one in particular I want to show you that you can create beautiful vivid pieces with limited supplies as well. So let's get on with it. By now you've seen me apply a little of the underlayer already using a plain printer paper sheet to mix my colors on. This way I can make sure that I have the color I want before putting it onto my pastel mud paper. Since the subject today is very colorful we're going with bright vivid colors. Just make sure that you keep them a little darker than you want your end result to be. This will help you with adding the details later on with the pencils. I mostly start my underlayer with the lightest parts first. This way I don't have to clean out my soft tool every time between colors, since going from black to the pinkish white wouldn't be such a great idea if you haven't cleaned it out. So always keep this in mind when you're going from one color to another. And when I'm done with the underlayer it's time to bring out the pencils. As you all know adding details is my favorite thing so this is the part I always look forward to. I start off with a blue color to get in these short feathers on top of his head. They don't really look like regular feathers since they are so short, so just add these in the way you see them on your reference picture. A little fur like. Since I'm working from the top to the bottom, I'm picking up my green pencil next. I work this way so that I don't smudge the areas I already added details in with my hand. But you can work any way that you want to, this is not some kind of rule you have to follow, it just helps me to keep my drawings clean. For the green I'm using a darker pencil than the green I used for my underlayer. After this I'm going in with a lighter green and an even lighter one after that. You'll see that I darken the base where the green feather starts as well. This is simply copying my reference picture. If I didn't use a reference here I would never have known that the green feather started out like little black ones. So this is why a reference picture is so important. It doesn't matter how much you think you know your subject, there will always be one thing or another that you wouldn't have thought of. At least that's my opinion. With the lightest green and even a creamy yellow pencil I start to give the impression of feathers a little by grouping some strokes together in the shape of a feather. This is a very subtle way of creating the illusion of feathers. If you haven't done so by now make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of these future videos. You're doing me a great favor by hitting that button too as it helps to grow my channel and reach more people just like yourself. So a big thank you in advance. And then it's time for the skin of our feathered friend here. Which has a lot of wrinkles as you will see in a little bit. I start out with a very light peach color to get in the first indications of the wrinkles, blending them out with my finger to make them a little less harsh. Make sure you look very closely to your reference picture here to see where the wrinkles change direction and where they come together. Like around the eye for example. After this I'm just using a bluish grey and a dark grey to get in a little shadow between the wrinkles where there should be. Again I get all of this information by looking at my, you guessed it, reference picture. Next up I'm using a white pencil to get in the highlights on the skin and make it a little sharper looking, like it's more in focus. Make sure to only add in white where you can see highlights, don't add this in on every wrinkle as it will look very weird if there are highlights everywhere. Next up is the eye, which has a very special sort of skin around it, at least in my opinion. Since it looks like there are little balls around it. Adding in the eye itself isn't too much work here since it consists out of three colors. A very light creamy color, black and a light yellow. The light cream and yellow for the iris and the black for the pupil of course. After this is added in, remember to go over the top of the eye to give it a little reflection with a very light grey or white. This will make the eye seem much more realistic. Next up is his right black feather coming in behind his beak. This is in a shadowed part so there isn't much definition to it. We'll simply color this black and give it a little bit of definition with a dark grey pencil. The beak is the main focus of the painting so we'll spend just a little bit more time on it. I start out with a dirty pink color 
to give the illusion of light being reflected on there. And since he's sitting in front of a pink background, it's only natural that the color reflected on there would be pink. After that, I'm darkening up the beak with a black pencil and blending that out with my blending stump to make the strokes a little softer. After that, going in with that bluish grey to get in some scratches on there. Make sure you follow the curve of the beak when you add these in, since it is a 3D object. This helps to make it look a lot more realistic. When I'm done with this grey, I choose a lighter one and go over some of the indentations again and add some in between. This makes it look like light is reflected on there as well as make them pop some more. Last but not least, going over the base of some of these scratches with white to emphasize some more scratches. The lower part of the beak is a lot less work since it's much smaller. We're simply going over this part with white in a little crisscross pattern to indicate some scratches on there as well. When this is done, I look at the beak as a whole and decided that the front part needed a little more highlights and scratches as well, so I've added these in. Next up is the orange belly and lower feathers. There isn't much to these as they are out of focus, so we're just going to indicate that they are there. After looking at my reference and having filled in the top part of our feathered friend, I noticed that the belly colors were very muted in comparison to the rest, so I decided to amp up the brightness on there a little. Or better said, a lot. I used a very bright orange and a yellow for this, to make the drawing as a whole more cohesive. Only indicating some feathers by making the edges of the top feathers a little wiry. After this I filled in the black for the black feathers next to his head on the right. I realized that these lay over the blue and yellow ones on the right of our paper. So I decided to add these in first, that way I can add the black feathers without having to worry that I still need to add in the feathers that go under these. Makes it a lot easier to draw these in order from the bottom to the top, if that makes sense. Anyway, so I started on the blue feathers in the corner there, but there isn't much to them since it's such a small patch. I give the illusion of feathers in there by adding some lighter feathers and darker shadow underneath them. The yellow feathers next to the face are more like the feathers on top of his head, only longer. They don't really look like typical feathers as we all think about, but more like these wavy lines of fur. The only thing I needed to adjust here was the color again, since the patch was too dark compared to the feathers around it, which are much brighter. Then onto the feathers that do look like the typical feathers we all have in our minds when thinking of them. The black ones just beneath and next to the skin part. For these, I worked from the bottom to the top again so that the top feathers lay over the ones beneath without giving me too much hassle. I did these by simply adding black where the shadowed part is, mostly beneath the feather above, so at the top of the feather, and going over that with a dark grey to indicate the direction of them. Now this is what feathers look like to me. Just continue this pattern until you reach the top feather. To me, he looks a little bald right now, don't you think? So for the last part of our drawing, the little baby feathers that grow out of his skin. I add these in using a plain black pencil and will be going over them with a dark grey to give them some highlights. After this is done, I look at my drawing one last time to see what could be improved and decided that the eye could use a little more contrast. And the lower yellow part, the belly as I like to call it, needed a little more brightness. So I glazed over that with a very bright orange again. When all of this was done, I was ready to call this one finished. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you again next Friday and in the meantime, have a great week.